brought to you by Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of awesome classes. The first thousand people who click the link down below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So check it out. More to come. Let's talk about practicing. How much should you practice? Should you prioritize chords, scales, arpeggios, songs, finger style, strumming? Which categories should you focus on? Well, the thing is, I have no idea. You are probably the only one who should be able to answer these questions because you are the only one who truly knows which kind of guitar player you want to be. Now I understand that it can be challenging for some of you to figure out what to practice. There are so many things that we like, so many things that we want to play, so many things that we should be playing, so many things that we shouldn't really play, yet we practice them anyway. So in this video, I thought I would show you my practice routine and I also want to show you my thought process behind my practice routine. It changes all the time, guys, and it depends how much time I have to practice and what are the things that I want to focus on. And so I want to share with you the one that I am practicing right now so that hopefully you can have an idea and this video maybe can help you figure out your practice routine. Now I'm currently practicing about maybe one and a half, two hours a day. So three categories are absolutely fine. And these three categories for me right now are category number one, scales, category number two, chords, and category number three, songwriting. Let's talk about scales. Now when I say scales, guys, I don't mean that I, you know, put a metronome and I try to play these scales up and down as quickly as possible. I just don't really care how fast I play, to be honest with you. I've been playing for over 20 years and again, I'm 35. I have not that much time available to practice. So I don't wanna spend time just playing a scale up and down and see how fast I can play it. So right now I like to practice scales melodically. So I kind of noodle around with the scale, but I do have a system. For example, I don't like to play in just one position. I actually force myself to play up and down the neck. So I try to play three to four notes per string like this. This is an E major scale. So I can spend a few minutes playing the scale like this and then I would just try to play the scale melodically. I can, for example, play the low E string. We are in E major. I'm playing the E major scale. So I play the low E string. And then I would just, you know, start playing stuff without thinking too much, without worrying too much about the speed and the rhythm. I just want to constantly keep playing like this. I also like to, for example, change the chord and go to the A major chord. If we are in a key of you know, E major, I can play the A. Obviously, you know, to get to this point where you can freely move your hand up and down the neck in any key you want, in this case, the E major key, uh, would be to learn the E major scale in each position. So, for example, you could play the E major here. And then the E major starting from the F sharp. And then from the G sharp. And then from the A, the B, 
and then we have the C sharp and let's talk about chords guys I want to show you one of my favorite exercises and I have been doing this one quite a lot recently in fact that's the reason why we have so many lessons about you know movable chords and all these symmetrical chords that you can move up and down and it's a great exercise so for example i like to come up with uh, like a chord shape so we start with a chord shape for example lately i've been working on this one on this beautiful e major seven chord and what i want to do i'm going to force myself to use the same shape and to move it up and down and I'm gonna use the notes of the scale uh, to make sure that I obviously hit the right notes. And so, for example, I could do, I could play this chord in this position. And then I can go up, and then up with the B. Now the cool thing is that you can also do it melodically. For example, that could be another shape. Now the second shape, this one was it kind of improvised. And the cool thing about this exercise is the fact that, you know, you come up with so many different chords, even, you know, before knowing the name of each one of these chords. And then once you find the one that you really like, you can analyze the notes and come up with the name. It's a beautiful and lovely exercise. And I have been posting a lot of lessons lately uh, based on this approach. Um, so I really recommend that you try it. You know, sometimes you can literally do it with, uh, you know, one finger, uh, one position, one finger. Let's take a moment to talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare, the online learning community with thousands of awesome classes. I consider Skillshare to be the Netflix of learning. There are so many things that you can learn, so many classes that you can take, ranging from music, art, self-development, video recording, video editing, and more. After watching a couple of classes on how to set the exposure of my camera correctly and how to light my video properly, then I was able to really improve the quality of my tutorials. Now, the cool thing is that you can access Skillshare for free. The first thousand people who click the link down below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So you get access all the courses. And then if you like it, you can sign up for less than 10 bucks a month. So thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to the lesson. Now, one of the things that I love about being a musician is the fact that I can develop my musical ideas and I can transform all these musical ideas into a song. Now, I want to take you inside one of my songs to show you how I usually practice songwriting. Now, one of the most challenging things about writing my music is that for me, sometimes it's difficult to make decisions. I mean, there is always something that you can add to the song or maybe you can make the melody more catchy. Sometimes I feel I'm not really doing the right thing. So for me, the first thing that I practice when I work on my songwriting skills is that I wanna stick with my decisions. I don't wanna change the music all the time. And once I come up with a musical idea, I'm gonna work on that musical idea without changing it too much. 
Now let me give an example with this song I've been working on. It's called This Journey Called Life. It's already on my YouTube channel and it's available on all the streaming platforms. And I want to kind of break it down so that I can show you my songwriting decisions uh, for this song. Now one songwriting exercise that I love is to write down a chord progression and record it and then try to come up with a melody. And I will just loop the same chord progression and try to come up with something that I can sing. And this is what happened with this song. In fact, I think the first thing that I recorded was this one. The, the, the chord progression, which is this one, B minor, and B minor over A. So I looped these four chords and then I started playing around with the melody. So I eventually came up with this. first melody and then the second one slightly different third time slightly different and the fourth time slightly different And then you have the chorus. So this melody came to life um, by practicing and repeating uh, the same thing over and over again. And then eventually, once I found the one that I like it, I kind of recorded and that was the melody for this song. If I didn't record this chord progression and I didn't spend time improvising over these chords, I would probably never come up with something like this. So these are the three categories that I have been practicing. I love them and I have a lot of fun playing these things. Of course, guys, spend a little bit of time trying to find the perfect practice routine for you. Take it step by step and enjoy the process. Enjoy this video and I'll see you soon.